Every time you need to do something on the internet, let's say for example, you want to pay someone, you need to go to your bank account and you need to physically give a key. This could be in the form of a cookie or a password to your bank server so that they know this is you. And on your bank server, it's gonna say, okay, you've supplied us with this key. Is this the same as the bank key that we expect? And if it is the same key, if the bank key equals your key, then they will let you access the resources, send money and do everything else. But what if there was some security flaw in the equal sign? Let's get into it. So the key to the timing attack is the double equals. If password equals password, how do you know that these two strings are equal? So it's important to understand how it works internally. It actually goes letter by letter and checks if each one is equal. If at some point it finds that one of the letters isn't equal, it will exit out of the loop. So we can actually use that information to say, okay, it found the first one, then it found the second one, and then it didn't find the third one. So then you know, okay, the second point in our key is incorrect. I'm gonna quick implement this equals operator so that we can see how it works in Python. So the next thing that we need to do is actually have a password login mechanism that we need to crack. This is going to be called login. It's going to take the user password and then we're going to try crack the secret there. So all we need to do now is use our comp function and see, okay, if the person has the correct password, the user has access to data. If the person doesn't have the correct password, the user does not have access to this data. So now that we've got our basic login mechanism set up, we need to figure out a way to actually calculate the letters. So the key to this is looping over your full range of inputs, and we're just going to use lowercase uh, letters in this example, but looping over your full range of input and trying your login mechanism for each one. And you should notice that for the correct one, it takes a tiny bit longer because as it checks the letters, if it gets one correct, it will move on to the next one and therefore loop over a thing one more time. You can't exactly calculate that information based on one try. So we're gonna do a large sample of tries and then the one that takes just a little bit the longest will actually be our correct one. So let's quick start off and loop over all our letters and then we will start calculating times. The important thing to take note of here is the padding that we've added so that the password attempt and the real password lengths are the same. So the next step is to calculate how long each letter took. That's just a simple case of timing how long each one took and adding that to our results dictionary. So now if we print out the result, we can see that it isn't particularly useful because the timings aren't in aggregate yet. We actually need to get quite a large amount of sample data to be able to figure out which one took the longest. So we're just gonna loop over 10,000 times of this exact same loop, um, keeping our rest of our code the same because we're just gonna sum the amount of times each thing took. Now the one that took the longest should be our key. So let's filter our results, or test that works. So now we can see we've got a sum of all of the different key times. So now we just need to sort that list and print the one that took the longest. And there we have it. P is in fact our first letter. So now that we've solved one of them, solving the rest is actually quite simple. It's just a matter of looping over the rest of the letters and cracking each one in the exact same mechanism. So now we just loop through each letter, get our next letter and add it to our already cracked letters and we should in theory have our password.
print this to screen. There we go, it's that simple. That is a timing attack in Python. So there's quite a few interesting parts to this attack. And I feel like the key takeaway is it's using something that you wouldn't have initially thought useful. So there's many different kinds of timing attacks. Some of them are not obvious for the people implementing the system until after the fact. So take the example of when you visit a web page, the URL changes color. What people have actually done is have code that runs in your system. So you visit some website. What that website then does is it looks and checks the color of thousands and thousands of different URLs to see and kind of track your history. That's actually since been fixed where JavaScript and the browsers that run it have a mechanism so that you can't check color directly like that. But there's other ones that are just inevitable. When you load a map onto your page, there's kind of a caching mechanism so that the maps will load faster. So imagine you are using a map system to navigate some new area or just navigate around your hometown. Other sites, as you visit them, could then pull Google's maps and see, oh wow, this is loaded very quickly, which means you're in that vicinity. Okay, that's timing attacks in Python. I hope you enjoyed the video.